One of the things that I encourage um, people to do that I'm showing how to get into working with affinity is try not to think in the convention of what you've been taught all the years. Um, try and think outside the box because often in affinity and, and maybe different other programs, they have new tools that they bring along or new ways of working with things that are there to, to speed up stuff. And if you just keep working in the old method all the time, you, you'll find yourself lagging behind. So one of the ways of doing it is to think outside the box when you're looking at an object that you're trying to replicate. So this was an example of what somebody wanted to have um, sort of designed. This was um, not designed, but traced. Uh, so the initial part of the journey was to go in and let me just see, I'm on this artboard. Okay, yeah, all of these things are locked because I don't want to move them. So this is all pixel based. So to, to modify it, usually a person would go in with a pen tool over there. And for anybody that knows how I work, I, I don't pull the curves immediately. I just do the points and then I curve it afterwards. But, you know, it's just a, a certain workflow that I use. You don't have to do it this way. But you'd come in, let me just add this as a black color. Um, let me get in here and just reset this. Okay, so you'd come in and then you could do your modification. Okay, so this, this is just the method that I use, but the point I'm wanting to get across is that people will say, okay, go and trace it, whichever you go, whether you're doing it immediately curving or whether you do it the way that I usually do it, where I'll, I'll go into a system and then, you know, tweak the, the specific handles as I go along, um, whichever way. Um, you know, you, you can do the modeling like you want to, but the point I want to get across is you, you can either decide now to go do the conventional where, you, where you're tracing all of this stuff. Uh, let me just get this here. I know I said I'm not tracing it, but I just want to show you. So you could either go in and start tracing all of these things and then you know, do the fill, or thinking outside the box, think of a different tool that you could use. And let me show you another way of doing this. So you can go through all of that, or let's delete that. Or you could just go and say, okay, let me come there and go right down here, and then I'm going to go to the node tool. Okay, and I'm going to drag my node area till about there, and then just move the handle. So I'm, I'm going to create a single line that goes from the one edge to the other edge. In this way, I can create a perfect smooth line like that. But now what good is that going to do me? Now, if you're working on a tablet, uh, whether it's an iPad or a Slate or just on a Wacom tablet, you have the ability to s set your pins and your pressures and all that. But I, I'm referring to people working on your, without a tablet, just working with a mouse. You wouldn't be thinking in this direction, but I want you to encourage your, your brain to think outside the box. If you think like this, okay, that is to get there quickly instead of tracing all the way around. If I have a single line, can I now drop in a thickness and modify it to be thin from one side to the other? And yes, that's possible. So I'm going to keep that color as being black so we can see it grow. So I'll push it all maximum there. Now I'm looking at this and this is just one solid bulk area. Um, how do I modify this? I would go down, once I'm on the stroke, go down to pressure. Um, before I click on pressure, just make sure that scale and scale with object is on. Because if you want to size this thing and that is not put on, you might find the, the extent of your, your modification might, might be um, sort of distorted. So just make sure that is on. But then we go to pressure. This pressure has got two nodes that it starts with. This on the left is where you started off your movement and that's on the right. Now, oops, where did I go? Now if you click here and you move, both lines are going to move and it shows you what's happening. You can get right back to that original state when you had the line. Okay, we move it up. What we want to have is the starting off area. We want to use that. The top area here is the thickness that the the stroke is, and if you move it to the bottom, it's going to make the stroke thin.
But if I just do it on the one side, it's going to be thin here and thick on the other side. And how to get to that, you can just click on that and test it. If it's still going, then like do a double click on there. Uh, let's see, click again. Or is it a right click? I never can sort this out, you know, I'm not helping myself. I kept shift down, there we go. Okay, so I just kept shift down and I clicked here. All I want to do is move the, the one part over here and there we go. There I've got an object that's pretty much what I want. And if it overshoots there, I can go back to the node and just modify it right back to that spot. And then I could decide whether I want to tweak it there. But there I've got it immediately. And now it might need to get a bit thicker. I'm on maximum here of the slider, but that doesn't mean that's how far it goes. This with all, um, all affinity stuff, you can type a number in there bigger. Okay, I'm going to just change this mitre here down. It's usually on about, I think, 1.4 or something. The reason I'm doing that is because I want to show you something when I, when I do a modification. We'll see a, almost an artifact and I'll show you how to use MITRE to correct that. But for now, I want to thicken this to say 150. If I do that, there we've got it. So I can now take this point and move it to where I want to just tweak it there. And there I've got a perfect area. Okay, And that was one single line using that thickness. Make sure scale is on and use this pressure curve. Now this pressure curve you can modify in crazy ways by just clicking on the line you can drop nodes and then you can modify it like that make it thin in that areas etc this can go all all different ways it's from start to end and that is from the thickest part to the thinnest so you can do modifications uh, i don't want to do that now so to remove the node you right click with your mouse right click there and it will just go back to its original now the point is if this is all you want so let's move this across. If that was all you want, then you could just go and say, okay, that outline, we're going to make it red. And there we are. Or oh, let's use this color red here. Let me sample that. Let's say we're going to use that red. Oh, let me move that across. Okay, and let's apply that red over. So say we got that. The reason it's looking slightly different is because I've got a gradient on there. But now, if you wanted to drop in a gradient there, you couldn't do it because this is a stroke. So how do you get to the point that you can expand the stroke? Now, if you were going to use the stroke to duplicate it in other areas, I'd suggest that you, you maybe, I keep shift down and I just drag out another copy and I drop it there. So I keep the original here when I do this modification. Because once I do the modification here, yeah, I'm going to expand this. Uh, I've got a shortcut key E on my keyboard, but if you go under layers, you'll see it's there. It says expand stroke. What expand stroke does, it is going to expand the stroke to be this exact shape, but the outline would be a stroke again and the inside would be a fill. Let me show you. Click there. There we go. Okay, you can't see the outline stroke that well because it's transparent here. If I drop in a color and I maybe make it a little bit thicker, you can see there's the stroke is a bit thicker over there. But now, remember I told you I'm going to change the mitre down to two. If you wanted this edge to be sharp, you would have had to change this mitre. And I've done a few sort of settings. I think the one that works well in this case, I usually take it to five only, but in this case to 10, you'll see it will have a, a nice point finish there. That's if you're going to now, after expanding, use the stroke on the outside. In this case, I'm not going to, so I'm going to make the stroke transparent. I really don't need that. But there we have the area. Um, not exact color, but anyhow. There I have it there, and then all I can do is go in and say fill tool and drop the fill color. Okay, and do the fill according to exactly how you want it. This is something else. So I'm, I'm not here to show you the fill areas. I'm just showing you that this is the only way you can start working, dropping in fills and all that, if this area is expanded once you use that single stroke method that I'm showing you. Okay, so that's how you get to it. Key point here is when you look at an object, think of possible ways of doing it quickly with method, methods that are more streamlined. I mean, for you to go and trace each of these things and round off each of those angles and make sure they're all smooth, is a bit of a schlep, whereas here it's a, a single stroke that you could get in. And the other benefit is if, 
if they come and they said, okay, but we want this stroke to, to curve around a bit more, then it's as simple as coming and going to grab there and moving that down, maybe turning it like that. Once you have that, you have the area you could take. I'm going to just duplicate that again. For ease of example, maybe change it to different. Oh, that's the full color. We want that clear. Uh, I'm going to change that to a green. So once we're happy with that, I, I'm going to press E now, which is the same as layers expand. There I expanded it, and now they want that one with a blue outline. So I'm going to make the stroke thicker so we can see it. And the mitre, I'm going to push up to say 10, so keep it nice and sharp. Okay. So there we've got that curve beautifully and it was all used from a single stroke design and using this pressure area. Just note that once you're using the pressure area, if you go and take the pen again, it by default is going to keep that. So if I just do a click here and go straight line here, it's going to go small to thick. So if I thicken it, this is what's going to happen, okay, because of this pressure area. If I don't want that to happen, then I... Basically, before I make my next edit, um, I'm going to go in here and click Reset. Just make sure you haven't selected any of these before when you click Reset, because then it will change the actual um, area that you've selected on. But if I go and I say Reset, and I come back to my pen tool and I draw it, it's going to just keep a normal setup over there. Okay. If I go now and I go click back onto this object, and I go into Pressure, you see it still maintains that if I come onto this one, you'll see that it's reset itself. Okay, so your pressure curve is maintained within the object that you're working. Have a fantastic day and God bless.